Chapter 1 Hooves pounded the earth in the distance. Jack shook his head. I must be a fisherman. Lowering his black hooded mask over his face, he glanced back at his four brothers. Their horses snorted and stomped at the ground. Saints! Masks on! He hissed. Stick to the code. You're called by your saint's name. We are thieves, not murderers. Remember yourselves, lads. Narrowing his eyes to see through the slits in his mask, Jack scanned the ribbon of road beyond the trees. The carriage they had been tracking careened into view along with half a dozen guards. Quinn nosed his horse forward, stopping beside Jack. The hour grows late. They appear to be in a hurry to reach the next village before dark. Jack stretched his neck to one side, then the other. He took up his reins. Tis a pity we'll have to delay them. He kicked his horse in the flanks. He and his brothers surged forward, but then the second youngest, Rory, shot ahead. Damn his reckless hide, Jack cursed. What the devil is wrong with him? He's going to collide with the carriage, Quinn shouted. Without slowing his horse, Jack dropped the reins and cupped his hands around his mouth, shouting to Rory through the fabric of his mask. Pull back, St Thomas! But either Rory did not hear his warning or chose to ignore it. Bending low in his saddle, Jack urged his horse faster to catch his wayward brother. But it was too late. Jack cursed as Rory shot through the trees into the open road, straight into the carriage's path. Rory's horse reared up on its hind legs. A shout went up from the carriage driver while the guards whirled to meet Rory's blade. Another cry from the driver grabbed Jack's attention. The carriage rocked, then listed hard right. The driver pulled back, but the vehicle bounced to the left, the right wheels airborne for an instant. Then it toppled onto its side and skidded. If his brother's recklessness had killed anyone within the carriage, Jack would beat him. Jack reached the roadside at a gallop and met the guards head on. Steel rang in a harsh clash. Fury swept through him. A guard charged at Jack. He parried, then swung. The flat side of his sword slammed his attacker's forearm. The enemy's blade dropped to the ground. One guard disarmed. Jack swung around, his sword carving into a shoulder. Another enemy blade dropped. One guard maimed. Sword raised high, he readied for the next assault, but only a cloud of dust stirred. He scanned his brothers. None injured. All had kept their seats. Then he eyed the guards on the ground. None dead. With a grunt of approval, Jack swung down from his horse. His brothers followed. In the fading light of day, Jack knew they were a terrific sight. They were all large men, and Ian their youngest brother, at only 19 stood a hand taller than Jack, who was already well over six feet in height. They wore black tunics covered in gleaming black mail, black hose, tall black boots, and black hooded masks, and about their necks hung large wooden crosses. Jack turned to his middle brother, Alec. St Paul, check the carriage. Make sure no one is hurt. With a nod, Alec dismounted and hastened to the overturned carriage. Next, Jack motioned to Rory. St Thomas, gather the weapons. And then to Quinn he said, St Augustine, take up collection. St John, he said to Ian, secure the guard. A loud screech drew Jack's attention back to the carriage. St Paul, he said to Alec. What the hell is going on? A moment later, Alec pulled a thrashing mass of silk and lace from the carriage. He set the lady on her feet. She screamed and lashed out, her fingers bent into claws. Alec freed his dirk and pressed the tip against the lady's white throat. At once she ceased her struggle, but Jack saw a droplet of blood appear beneath the blade. St Paul, Jack's tone held a warning. Stick to the code. The lady screeched and shifted her gaze to Jack. St Paul? St Peter? You are no saints. How dare you make a mockery of what is holy? Jack turned his back on her. She snarled her fury. I am Lady Eleanor de Clare. You will feel the full wrath of King Edward, you worthless Scottish- Jack turned and lunged forward, bringing his masked face inches from hers. I have felt the full wrath of your king. He closed his eyes, reclaiming his control. He would not take his fury out on a woman. 
Taking a step back, he looked at Quinn, who rifled through one of her trunks. What has she given our cause? A handsome bag of coin. But that is all, Quinn answered. Jack turned back to her. He grasped the wimple she wore. She shrank away as he rubbed the fabric between his fingers. No finer silk had he ever felt. He lifted his gaze to her face. Although he guessed she had as many as five and thirty years, her beauty had yet to fade. He met her cold, blue eyes and reached down, seizing her fingers. Three rings, with gems the size of blackberries, gleamed, even in a dim light. She yanked in an effort to pull her hand free, but he grabbed her wrist and held her still while he worked the rings from her fingers. He dropped her hand and it flew to her throat. Jack reached for her. Stay back, you Scottish bastard! He shoved her hand aside. His fingers made contact with a string of pearls lying on skin as smooth as velvet. His gaze dropped from her neck to her chest, raking across her display of rounded flesh, pressing with every exhale against the bold cut of her bodice. Then he reached behind her neck, slowly grazing her silken skin, and unclasped the string of pearls. She screeched again, but Alec came up behind her and gagged her with a length of cloth. Not too tight. Jack said before handing the jewels to Quinn. Add these to the lot. Crossing the road, he swung up on his horse. Saints, he said. Let's ride. St. Peter, Rory called after him. Jack shifted in his saddle to look back. Rory pressed the tip of his dirk to the lady's throat. The world could have one less English bitch in it. Jack shook his head. I gave you an order. Mount your horse and come on. We're thieves. Not murderers. Thank you so much for watching. If you would like to enjoy more videos like this one, click the thumbs up button and subscribe to our channel. See you next time out in the Highlands.